Good morning on this second Sunday in January. Our readings are from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, 33 to 35, concerning Jesus' presentation in the temple, and John, chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about Jesus. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be oppressed, so that inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul also. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found the one about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael, Coming toward him, Jesus said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked Jesus, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than thee. And Jesus said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened 
and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Here ends the reading from the Gospel according to John and the reading from the Gospel according to Luke. May God grant God's blessing this day in our hearing. Amen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Once upon a time, yes, once upon a time, if, and that is an if, if we entered through the portal of life, welcomed by two loving human beings and possibly a family of generations depicted in Norman Rockwell artistry. We, you and me, were most likely the sparkle in the eyes of at least two people. Those two people who looked into our brown or blue or hazel or indistinguishable color eyes and at our ch chubby little cheeks had hopes and dreams for us. Yes, those two human beings looked at the cute little baby we were that opened their hearts to joy and hope and aspirations and dreams and, well, let your lying in bed with lights out nighttime mind, free from other worldly thoughts, stretch your imagination of the hopes they had for us. If we were fortunate enough to come into that world, we were loved from the first cry and change of diapers. Maybe the diaper change is not the best loving memory, but it does show that we were loved. That little baby was each of us, and looking around the congregation each Sunday morning, for most of us, that little baby was us, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, or more years ago. You don't believe that once upon a time you were a cuddly, little, all-dependent, all-parent-consuming, precious to the eyes of mama and papa creature, Take a look around you and imagine if you can. We were once, we were once that tiny little bundle of joy. I find it hard to believe that I was once cuddled and nursed and bounced on a knee. But it happened. I know because I bounced on my knee and changed diapers and played airplane games with food on a spoon to get a then little girl and then little boy to eat something Mama Gerber prepared and sealed in a jar. Where did I learn this bouncing on a knee and hugging my children? My mom and dad did the same. No concrete evidence, no written diary of how they cared for me, and I'm sure many of you are in the same situation. Our moms and dads, and maybe other family generations, guided you and guided me in those formative years, then hung on to us through our adolescent, preteen, and teen, and leaving home years for a new life. We know this. 
we know this, that we were loved and cared for. Since we are here this morning in church, because those two people who brought us into God's beautiful and loving world made it part of our lives. We are here to hear the lessons that will make us better neighbors, because that is how we were raised by those who loved us most. For the most part, you and I are little different in our values than the families that raised us. Did we meet those expectations of our families from the days when we were still opening up to the world, learning to crawl, then walk, then eat solid food and grab our cheeks, then teaching them to read and write and draw and adding and subtracting and multiplying. We won't mention long division. Did we achieve those aspirations mom and dad had when tenderly holding us teeny tiny babies in their arms and dreaming about who we might grow to be. If all those parental dreams came true, there would be about 300 million presidents of the United States. Dreams are nice, but there is also reality, and there are other ways to serve the betterment of humanity. Would mom and dad be proud of who we grew to be? I'm proud of Sarah and Tom and who they have become as loving and caring adults and parents, and neither one of them is president. Thank God. What were some of the challenges we posed for those two people who sacrificed for us? Were we good little girls and good little boys? Were we ever naughty and leave those raising us shaking their heads in frustration and asking the question, where did we go wrong? Yet they still loved us. For me, an early confession, early life confession, just one for today. I was trouble. One early memory as a kindergartner at Westwood Elementary School in North Jersey, I recall my teacher put me in the cloak closet for misbehaving and she closed the door. I have no recollection of what I did wrong, but my long ago recollection envisions a long skinny closet with a window at the far end and lots of coats hanging on the racks. Along the closet floor, Roy Rogers and Dale Evans' lunch boxes were lined up. I have that vague but pretty clear memory of opening up those lunch boxes and eating the cookies and cupcakes or whatever my classmates' moms and dads packed for their sweet little bundle from heaven. Let me just say, the teacher never put me in that closet again. To add to that, I was not an instant Einstein. It took me two years to get out of first grade. There are lots more stories of struggles from my early youth, but we'll, we will leave it there for now. What were my mom and dad thinking? What were some of your 
misadventures or missteps growing up. And no, I am not asking for an altar call, but if you have a good childhood story of messing up and you have a sense of humor about it, I'm all ears sometime when you're here in church at fellowship time. Things that may not have been so funny when they happened years ago, generally we can laugh about them now. Generally. Why? Why this discussion about how we were raised? The thought of how we, as well as Jesus, was raised popped into my head upon reading my UCC Still Speaking Daily Devotional last Sunday morning. The Reverend Vince Amlin cited our scripture reading this morning from Luke. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and his sword will pierce your own soul too. Those words from Simeon were laying a lot of expectations, a lot of challenges, not just on the baby, but on Mary and Joseph. Did they think that maybe Simeon was just a crackpot? Two parents who almost surely faced a lot of worry and a lot of loss of sleep. When it comes to raising children, that happened to many of us too, didn't it? And it happened to those who raised us with such love and hope. How about Jesus growing up? What were the values his mom and dad brought to his upbringing? Matthew tells us Joseph was a righteous man. Luke says Mary was a favored one. Did they expose their little bundle of joy to their faith? The Bible tells us yes. Do you think Jesus may have been bounced on a knee and burped? Do you think he was cuddled and enjoyed that warm affection? The Bible seems to imply so. As difficult as that may be to imagine that our Lord of, of, of our Lord and Savior. Remember, Jesus was both human and divine, no different than us as a child. Then we ask, how was Jesus as a child? Was he anything special? Isaiah also tells us there was nothing special in how he looked that would attract attention. Luke says, the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Since he became strong, implies he was once weak, in need of his family to help him learn and grow. No different from you and me. Mary Hinkle Shore, Dean of Lutheran Theological Southern Seminary, tells us, the Gospels report that the Jesus family treated him as a regular child, no more or less of a miracle than any of our children are. The first sense that Jesus expressed that special expression, the special relationship with God, our Creator, was described in Luke. 
Now every year, his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. It was in the description of that event where he stayed for three days at the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And what is the message that I hope and pray you take with you as you leave our home of Christian worship this morning? Jesus never became president. Jesus was treated as a regular child and loved and exposed to his faith by his parents. Not much different than you and me. We should be thankful and grateful for the families that guided us from infancy to becoming faithful adults, gathering together each Sunday morning. We should be thankful and grateful that Mary and Joseph accepted the awesome task of raising that little baby, raised just like any other little baby, like you and me, to become the one who gives hope and meaning to all of life. Amen. now for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>